Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Steven and so uh, glad to join you um, via video for this week's uh, kind of New Testament devotional based off the New Testament reading plan that we've been going through as a church and I just love seeing from campus pastors, other staff, um, love hearing their thoughts on this plan and what they're learning. Um, so I just want to share a little bit uh, of what I learned this week in the plan. Um, you know, I've, I've been a part of the church for almost my entire life and have read a lot of these passages in the Gospels uh, tens, hundreds of times. And, and the amazing thing to me, though, is, is here I am, um, you know, kind of going through this plan and, uh, you know, the truth of, of Hebrews uh, 4.12, that the, that the Word of God is living and active, is still, um, is still very real and um, very true um, in these passages. I'm, I'm seeing things that I've never seen before in some of these passages. And so I just want to share one of them that I came across this week in the plan. It's actually in all four of the Gospels, but for some reason, um, just how it was in the plan this week in Matthew 26, it really kind of struck me. Um, and it is the story of um, Peter cutting off the ear of the uh, servant of the high priest, right, as Jesus is, uh, he's being betrayed by Judas, one of his disciples, and he's getting um, arrested. Um, so uh, the interesting to think me, the interesting thing to me about um, kind of this story is, is thinking about it from the perspective of this servant of the high priest who got his ear um, cut off. Um, we, we see in the John account of this story that his name was Malchus. And so if I'm Malchus and I am a part of this group that is coming to arrest um, Jesus, who, uh, who my party has deemed this kind of troublemaker in, in town, um, and then I see one of the, the disciples of this guy lunge at me with a sword uh, and cut my ear off. Uh, there are a few things maybe that I'm thinking. Um, one, perhaps, perhaps initially you're a little relieved um, because if this guy is coming at you with a sword, I don't know, if it's in, I don't know what Peter's intention was totally. Uh, I don't know if it was just to cut off his ear or maybe do some worse damage, aiming for the neck or something. But, but maybe initially kind of relieved that that I'm still alive because this guy just attacked me with a sword. However, at the same time, uh, my ear is gone. There's probably blood gushing from it, uh, and it's a very traumatic experience. But then, right after all that happens, this guy who we're supposed to be arresting, Jesus, he, he picks up the ear, and he puts it back on my head, and it is healed. And, you know, um, Malchus isn't mentioned uh, at any other point uh, in the Bible after this. And so we don't really know what happened to him or what his story ended up being. Um, but I, I think there, there could be two ways. One, uh, commentators think that um, because in the John passage, we actually see what his name was, that John put that in there for a reason. And perhaps he put that in there because um, the early Christian community might know who that was. Perhaps Malchus... Um, experienced kind of this miraculous healing power of Jesus and maybe um, became an important leader in the early church based on the experience he had with Jesus. But perhaps he could have gone another way in that uh, he is healed by Jesus uh, of the ear and he thinks, oh, that was cool. But he continues serving the high priest in town and continues to help push forward the prosecution and ultimately crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, whatever way he went, it, it kind of makes me think, um, how have I responded uh, when I have seen Jesus do miraculous things in my life, when I've seen him, um, seen evidence of his miraculous healing power in my life, um, and how have I responded to that? Have, have I gone the way of um, perhaps that first scenario um, where I've proclaimed that to other people, tried to make Jesus famous because of it, grow um, the church, make disciples because of what I've experienced with Jesus? Or have I thought, hmm, that was kind of crazy and cool and been thankful for it for a while, but then just kind of as time goes on, as life continues, just kind of forgotten about it and stopped um, proclaiming um, Jesus' miraculous powers to the world. So I wonder for you um, today, I'm surely there have been times in your life where you've seen evidence uh, of Jesus just strongly at work, um, whether that's through healing or, or miracles or just Him showing up when you needed Him to the most. 
Uh, and maybe it was recently, maybe it was a long time ago. But uh, my question for all of us would be, what, what is our response to that? How, um, how do we respond uh, to seeing what Jesus does in our lives? So I hope um, this story and, and maybe seeing something a little different about a story maybe we've read many times before um, is encouraging to you as you watch this wherever you are um, and excited to continue journeying uh, along with you in this uh, New Testament reading plan. Have a great day.